Hello, friends and aliens and robots, grandmas and grandpas and whoever else might be watching. So, as I am sure you have heard by now, um, schools are going to be remaining closed for the rest of the school year. <sighs> well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty bummed about it because I just want to get back to normal. I miss my classes. I miss teaching. And most of all, I just miss being around people. But you know what? School will go on. We'll continue with distance learning through the end of the year and we'll make the best of it. And I do fully expect all of you to come and visit me uh, whenever we get back to school, hopefully the beginning of uh, next school year. But hey, our health is the most important thing. So all we can do is make the best of what's left of this school year with distance learning. And with that being said, um, I'm gonna start off today's lesson with going over um, your assignment that was on last Tuesday. I'm gonna go over the answers and uh, make sure you know what kind of answers I expected so that we're all clear and on the same page with that. And then after that, I will introduce you to today's assignment. All right, so this first question, actually his first two questions, ask us what would happen next in the water cycle after what you see in these pictures. So the first one, uh, well, these are clouds, obviously. And so the next step in the cycle is going to be precipitation. So that is uh, basically water vapor that has condensed back into liquid and it's suspended in our atmosphere. So from then, it can really only go back down in the form of precipitation, which can be rain, snow, sleet, or hail. If the temperature is above freezing, then it will fall down as rain. If the temperature is below freezing, it can crystallize into snowflakes, or it can fall as sleet or hail. The next one is a picture of a puddle. So in this case, the puddle is likely going to evaporate. So this is going to be from the sun's energy. The sun's rays uh, start to heat up that water. As the water heats up, it changes from liquid into vapor. And from there, it enters the atmosphere. Uh, what can also happen is if the temperature drops below freezing, then the water will freeze instead of um, evaporating. So then instead, we have a frozen puddle. And that will stay frozen until the temperature goes back up causes that ice to turn back into liquid water, and then if it heats up more, it will go from liquid water to water vapor. So this next one is an interesting question about global warming. So a lot of scientists agree that the average temperature of Earth is increasing. So what would this do to the water cycle? Well, basically, if the temperature goes up, then we get an increase in evaporation. If there's more evaporation, then that would mean there is more water vapor in the atmosphere. And this would in turn lead to more water falling back down to Earth as precipitation. So if Earth's temperature is in fact rising, then what we could expect to see is more clouds due to more water vapor, more humidity because there's more vapor in the atmosphere, and more precipitation because all of that water vapor will eventually condense into water droplets and fall down. And this last question just asks us to identify what's going on at each of these numbers in the picture of the water cycle. Um, part number one is showing the sun's energy heating ocean water, causing it to evaporate. Number two shows that water vapor cooling off and condensing which forms a cloud, which is made up of tiny little droplets of liquid water. Number three shows us those clouds becoming too heavy with water droplets, which causes gravity to pull them back down as precipitation. It uh, looks like maybe it's showing some snow falling. And then the last one shows us water flowing downhill as surface runoff, and gravity continues to pull it down until it gets back to a river an ocean or becomes groundwater or seeps underground into an aquifer, which is basically like an underground lake. All right, so if you have any questions on that assignment, please email me or Schoology message me. And let's go ahead and go into Schoology and take a look at today's assignment. So today's assignment is a Nearpod, which if you're not familiar with it, it's basically just an interactive slideshow. So here I'm going into my distance learning folder, I'm gonna to find today's date, and then I'm going to click on the link to Water Cycle Nearpod. 
What I would recommend doing is using your little square o down in the lower right corner and either opening this in the app or opening it in Safari. Sometimes it doesn't run great in Schoology. So I'm gonna, for my example, just show you in Safari. So you're gonna type in your name so that I can give you credit for your work. And you're going to go through each slide. You can do this at whatever pace you want. Take as long as you want on each slide, reading over the information. Um, you can always go back and forth between slides. So there you do have a back button. And there are little activities along the way. Here's just a preliminary question to see what you think. Is water essential to life on Earth? Uh, I think it is pretty essential. So I'm going to select yes. And then you press your little right arrow and you go through each one, read the information. And then when it asks you to fill out a poll or answer a question, just go ahead and do that. And when you get to the end, you do not have to submit it to me. You don't have to save anything. Um, it automatically saves for you. And I will be able to log into my Nearpod and check on your progress and check out your answers and see how you did. So pretty straightforward. If you guys have any questions, as usual, you know what to do. Drop me a message.